exclusive to Dockrell's, the beautiful Vegasa fitted kitchen range from Spain, featuring superb design plus quality craftsmanship at unbeatable prices. Now at Dockrell's of Valley Mountain. We are the homemakers. Barney, do you remember? Dinners in the good old days. They used to taste so good always. Ah, Sunday roast with marrow pan peas from Bachelors. Test your memory, my beanie. To reach your family to the good old days taste Sunday. And every day, because Bachelors marrow pans are now in convenient cans, too. Just like Mother used to make. So for dinner, won't you remember? Bachelors marrow pan peas. Now in Ireland, the international credit card from Allied Irish Banks. Visa card. It'll help you do the shopping, run the car, decorate the house, go on holiday. It'll help you make ends meet too. Because with Visa card, you can make any number of purchases, pay for them at the end of the month, and it won't cost you a penny interest. It's a simple way to get cash too. Allied Irish Bank Visa card. Recognized in 120 countries worldwide, wherever you see the visa sign. Call into your local AIB branch now and put a great idea to work for you. Your house is under attack 24 hours a day. Resist the attackers and protect your house beautifully with smooth, long-lasting Dulux Weather Shield from HGW, Ireland's largest paint makers. Dogs that burn energy fast need a special food, Respond 2000. This great American dog food is so complete, it's really a high-energy power pack. For better times from trap to line, give them Respond 2000, the high-energy power pack from Kerry Co-op. Lift something lighter, something with body and flavor, dark and creamy. Lift something lighter. Lift the Guinness Light. Thrill to the mighty power of the sea in a great adventure double bill. Shipwreck, an epic tale of disaster, survival, and escape. Plus, the underwater war of the century, as Jules Verne's legendary submariner battles for world domination. The amazing Captain Nemo and shipwreck. At a cinema near you, check press for details. This month, lines offer you a super special prize, the new Ford Elite Escort, space, comfort, and up to 44 miles per gallon. And in December, a luxurious Escort gear. Sent 40 minstrels and an Elite Escort could be yours free with lines that tee for all time. The Diary of a Nobody has just started now on RT2, and that's followed by another episode of When the Boat Comes In, a drama series about Tyneside in the years after 1918. Here now on RT1, the news. Good evening, the headlines. The Ministers for Labour and Transport are to call in the parties in the Aer Lingus strike for talks within the next few days. In the meantime, the first group of stranded holidaymakers are now back in Dublin as the Aer Lingus emergency flights plan gets into full swing. Six people have died in separate accidents. In one, a three-year-old died in a burning tent. In Lebanon, an Irish soldier with the UN Peace Force has died in an accident when an armoured carrier overturned. The RUC are investigating the death of a man found with head injuries in Lurgan. We begin with the Aer Lingus strike, now in its third day. And it's just been announced that the Minister for Labour, Mr Fitzgerald, and the Communications Minister, Mr Reynolds, have called in the parties involved in the dispute for discussions. The meeting will be held within the next day or so, as Liam Cahill reports. The two ministers are calling in the parties for exploratory talks as soon as they can all be contacted. Obviously this isn't easy over holiday weekend. Before this announcement was made a short time ago, the chief executive of Aer Lingus, Mr David Kennedy, wasn't optimistic about an early settlement. He described the problems raised by the craftsmen's claim as intractable. However, he did clear up one point. 
He seemed to indicate that any increase won by the craftsmen would eventually have to be passed on to other Aer Lingus workers. This could be significant ultimately in reaching a solution. Mr. Kennedy put the onus on the Congress of Trade Unions to make the first attempt for peace in a strike that has been ruled contrary to the national understanding. The first of 14 special flights bringing stranded holidaymakers back from Europe arrived in Dublin Airport this evening. Aer Lingus say their emergency plans have operated very successfully so far. They've announced details of an extended flight program for tomorrow. There'll be six flights to London from Dublin and one from Shannon. There'll also be services to six continental destinations. Inbound flights include one from New York and there'll be one charter to bring home holidaymakers from Malaga to Dublin. Six people have been killed in separate accidents during the holiday weekend. A three-year-old girl, Fiona MacDonald of Artane in Dublin, was burned to death when a tent caught fire at Lahinchen County Clare. Her 18-month-old brother and two other relations were brought to hospital with burns. One was later released. In a three-car accident at Hollywood in County Down, one woman was killed and five others injured. The dead woman was 56-year-old Mrs. Emily O'Neill from Belfast. A man was killed and three people injured when their car overturned near Courtown Harbour in County Wexford. The man who died was Joseph Middleton, aged 21, from Walkinstown in Dublin. Near Dundalk, three teenagers from the Cross Maglen area of South Armagh were killed when their minicar collided with another vehicle. They were Michael Clark and Michael McKeown of Rathview Park and Siobhan Garvey. A fourth youth, Sean Rush, is said to be in a serious condition at St. Vincent's Hospital in Dublin. The driver of the second car wasn't badly hurt. Near Cross Maglen, a young County Monaghan man had a narrow escape last night when he drove into a line of gunfire. He was caught in the crossfire when two British Army patrols mistook the sound of a crowbanger in a field and started shooting. The motorist, Eamon McAleer from Castle Blaney, was uninjured, but one of the bullets is said to have struck his car. The Army are now investigating the incident. Also in the north, the body of a man has been found at Lurgan in County Armagh. The RUC say he died from head injuries and they haven't ruled out foul play. The man, who is said to be in his 30s, was discovered on waste ground at Castle Place. The police have issued a description in an attempt to identify him. An Irish soldier serving with the UN force in Lebanon has died in an accident. Sergeant Edward Yates of Virginia Park, Finglas South, died when an armoured personnel carrier in which he was travelling overturned. Nine other soldiers sustained minor injuries in the accident. Sergeant Yates had just completed a month's service in the Lebanon. He was married with three children. Pope John Paul, on the third day of his visit to France, has warned against both progressive and traditionist extremism. In an address to French bishops at a seminary in Paris, he said some people wanted to adapt the faith, Christian ethics, liturgy and church organization to changing mentalities and the demands of the world. Others had become rigid and closed off, frightened of innovation, and refused to accept the decisions of the church. The Pope said these were extreme and wrong positions which, caused, which the great majority of Catholics didn't share. Earlier, the Pope concelebrated mass at Le Bourget Airport before half a million people. Twice that number had been expected, but the wet and windy weather kept the attendance down. On a wooden platform, a few steps away from where Charles Lindbergh ended his historic transatlantic flight, the Pope warned that the world faced the threat of self-destruction because of man's misuse of science and technology. He said the problem had developed because man had abandoned his alliance with ancient wisdom. Tomorrow, the Pope goes to Lisieux in Normandy, the center of devotion to St. Teresa. He later addressed the United Nations Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization in Paris before returning to Rome. The Fine Gael front bencher, Mr. John Kelly, said today that the Unionists in the North weren't interested in anything the Taoiseach, Mr. Hawhey, had to offer. Mr. Kelly said the only course for people in the South consistent with national self-respect was to stop whinging for the English to mend the damage they did in an age when the rights of conquest were universally accepted and recognized and to mend the damage ourselves. He said he would advertise in the Northern media the truth about the Republic. 
This meant admitting our failures frankly, but also drawing attention to our achievements and rebutting the absurd prejudices and lies on which the more ignorant loyalists fed. In London early this morning, a bomb explosion damaged the Kuwait Oil Company's offices in New Bond Street. No one was injured, but the blast also damaged nearby shops and offices. Police say the explosion was caused by a bomb weighing about a pound and a half. No warning was given, and no one has claimed responsibility for the explosion. Several thousand people attended ceremonies at Greg Manor in County Kilkenny today to mark the reopening of the 13th century Duish Abbey after its restoration. The Abbey is the largest Cistercian monastery to have been built in Ireland. The President and the Taoiseach were among the attendances. Michael Ryan reports. On the banks of the River Barrow, Duish Abbey is the largest Cistercian Abbey built in Ireland, and its reopening today was attended by leaders of church and state. In the restoration, ancient skills had to be relearned, and a feature of that craftsmanship is the magnificent roof, rebuilt by local craftsmen in local unseasoned oak in the medieval fashion. Now about £400,000 has been spent, and a quarter of a million of that has yet to be found. Ironically, Duish was turned down for state help because it was in use as the parish church until recent years, so the local community took on the job themselves. Today's ceremonies were attended by the President, Dr. Hillary, and the centre point of those ceremonies was a solemn mass, the main celebrants of which were the Apostolic Nuncio, Dr. Alabrandi, the Archbishop of Dublin, the Archbishop of Cashel and Emily, the Bishop of Ferns, the Lord Abbot of Port Lenone, County Antrim, the Lord Abbot of Moon, County Kildare, and Dr. James Moyner of St. Patrick's Missionary Society. And the lesson was read by Antisha, Mr. Hawhey. The folk memory. Principal celebrant of that solemn mass was the Bishop of Kildare and Doctor Dr. Patrick Lennon, who in the homily spoke of the determination and the sense of history of the people of Gregna Manor in restoring the abbey, refusing to let their abbey church die. Later, a plaque commemorating the restoration was unveiled by the President, Dr. Hillary. And so the tiny town of Gregna Manor has restored to the whole country one of our finest examples of Gothic architecture, not as an empty monument, but as a living church in the community. According to British newspaper reports, the Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher, is expected to accept the budget compromise worked out in Brussels. It would cut British payment to the community by about two-thirds. In West Germany, however, the arrangement has aroused opposition. Bond's finance minister was quoted as saying he wouldn't accept the proposal worked out by the EEC foreign ministers. Now Sport and Castle Gar and County Galway have won the All-Ireland Club's senior hurling final. At Navan today, they beat Ballycastle County Antrim by one goal and 11 points to one goal and eight points. In the Spanish Grand Prix today, all three Irish drivers were forced to retire. The race was won by the Australian Alan Jones from the German Johan Maas. Dublin's David Kennedy had to retire after only a lap. Twelve laps later, Derek Daly's brakes failed and he crashed at over 100 miles an hour. Belfast's John Watson was lying fifth when, just after the halfway point, he crashed into a French driver who stopped suddenly in front of him. It wasn't the only crash of the race. Another French driver touched a rival and then crashed into Carlos Reutemann of Argentina, pushing him into the guardrails. Both drivers were unhurt. Only six of the 22 starters finished the race, which was run in near heatwave conditions. Now, weatherman Paddy McHugh. Good evening. Well, it was damp enough in the south and southwest today, but most parts of the country enjoyed dryish weather. Tomorrow, the prospects, I'm afraid, are rather more mixed. This is the picture at noon. The ridge of high pressure, which had given fair weather to start with today, moving away eastwards, and these fronts coming in from the southwest. Generally, they're rather weak features, but during tonight, they'll be moving on northeastwards across Ireland. The parent depression out here to the west, that also is moving northeastwards, with another one swinging in behind it. So the picture at noon tomorrow will look like this. We'll have a mild, moist, southwesterly air stream over the country with the front from time to time moving across the country. This particular part of it here moving northeastwards, another one to come in from the west later on. And for Tuesday, this depression will swing down here, bringing us into a southerly, very warm and moist air stream. So details now for the next 24 hours. Well, tonight, uh, some clear spells at first in the extreme north, but generally cloudy, and these outbreaks of drizzle or rain in the south and southwest will extend gradually northeastwards, in most places fairly light. 
but uh, hill fog will become rather extensive in the south and southwest. The winds tonight, mainly southerly, ranging force four or five for the most part, and it'll be quite mild with temperatures not falling below about 10 or 11 degrees Celsius. And then tomorrow, generally a pretty cloudy day, though there will be some breaks in the cloud from time to time, particularly early on in some northern areas and late in the day in the uh, Midlands and east. There'll be outbreaks of, er, of rain or drizzle from time to time. Some of this rather persistent, especially near southern and western coasts, where hill fog will be extensive. And the winds picking up a little bit on today, ranging up to four, six at times on western coasts. Uh, the 19 temperature there is where cloud breaks. It'll get quite warm during the afternoon and 15 where the cloud is rather persistent. Prospects then for Tuesday, a uh, very warm southerly air stream and some fairly reasonable sunny spells in the Midlands and East, but still fairly cloudy in the south and west, especially near coasts. Good night. The main points of the news again. The ministers for labour and transport are calling in the parties in the Aer Lingus strike for talks within the next few days. In the meantime, the first group of stranded holidaymakers are now back in Dublin as the airline's emergency flights plan gets underway. Six people have died in separate accidents. In one, a three-year-old girl died in a burning tent. An Irish soldier has died in an accident in Lebanon when an armoured vehicle overturned. Nine others were hurt. And that's all the news for the moment. From me, a very good night. Well, now there's time for a brief word about Monday evening's viewing here on RTE One this bank holiday weekend. At 6.30, Ryan's Fancy will be recalling life in America during Prohibition. Our feature film at 7 o'clock is It Happened at the World Fair, a comedy starring Elvis Presley, who will be singing ten great numbers from his repertoire. A new thriller serial by Agatha Christie, Why Didn't They Ask Evans, starts at 9.15. That's after the news. And following North, classic touch. This is the story of world-famous Tipperary racehorse trainer Vincent O'Brien. Classic touch, 10.25. If you want to save your money and you want to talk to someone who can surely help to make that money grow, the Irish permanent is the number one. They're the people who know. You should put a little money in the Irish permanent. Watch your savings growing. Your body is a mechanism as sensitive and complicated as a watch. That's why we make flora margarine with an oil that is so light it wouldn't even stop a watch. Sunflower oil. A light, pure, vegetable oil. Sunflower oil makes flora margarine light and easy to digest. Spread a little healthiness with flora. Yes, now standard on every single Ford car, free. Push-button radio, cloth upholstery, safety head restraints, sporty road wheels, adjustable rake seats, reversing lights, day-night mirror, driver's door mirror. All standard, all free on all Fords. GLs now have sunroof and tinted glass, hatchbacks and estates of rear wash white. All absolutely free. Ford, oh yes, we go further. Ford, we go further. When you consider a bar of Cadbury's fruit and nut, oh, what a richness is there. The perfection of Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate, the succulence of raisins, the enrichment of almond nuts. Oh Altogether, it's a terrible temptation. Cadbury's fruit and nut. Kellogg's Special K Breakfast, the tasty way to avoid mid-morning food attacks. 
one serving Kellogg's Special K cereal with a little milk and sugar, plus half a grapefruit, plus one cup black coffee or lemon tea, equals 250 delicious calories. And on you, that's gonna look good. We taste good, you look good. Prices are massacred for penny sale. Big cuts in every department. There's a price massacre at pennies. These houses are painted with Santex because they can't afford to use anything less. Can you? Watch your savings grow with the Irish Permanent at 10.75% standard rate tax paid. Clear all styling brush with automatic curl release and dual voltage for travelers. Synanthic stops the march of worm damage in cattle and sheep. American designer Ralph Lauren has a perfume for you at Switzer's this week. Monkeys are now. Monkeys are different. They're fresh roasted peanuts in the shell. Radio Television on Jalgrove, you're watching RTE1. We return now to the Gaiety Theatre Dublin for part two of Tops of the Town. There you are now, I said 20 minutes and they're still coming back. However, you'll be seated quite peacefully.